pH in living soil. So this viewer says their tap water comes in at 8.9 pH, and after filtering, it stills 8.5 pH. Should they lower the pH of the water prior to doing a soil drench? If so, what should they use to lower the pH? It's a good question. Um, pH in living soil has always been a big uh, like argument point. And I'll give you a little spiel on soil pH before we get into what this person should do about their water. Um, because there's no one simple answer. I kind of relate it to jujitsu because I, I grapple regularly. And when you get an answer from a white or blue belt, it might be an answer that would work, but you don't know if it works up to the highest level. And you start to find when you ask a black belt, hey, how do I get out of this problem? And then he just looks at you and says, don't, don't get in that problem. <laughs> you know. And so it's kind of frustrating. But typically the smarter people I know, they don't have just a straight answer. It's kind of like, it depends. Um, so when we're talking about pH, it really does depend. Um, when you're on a farm and you're growing out here in Colorado, our soil is pretty alkaline. But if it's not full of alkalinity and problematic substances, it's just full of calcium, it's amazing soil. You don't really want to lower the pH. And what I mean by that is the soil is made up of these elements that dictate the pH. Same in our potting soils. So when we make a potting soil and we're adding copious amounts of rock dust, clays, and composts, we're attempting to mimic a regular high organic matter soil. And so that's why we call it living soil, not potting soil. Potting soil is basically hydroponic. It's just a medium to hold water. But when we get to the point where we're designing it and we send it to the lab, you can see this percentage of calcium, magnesium, potassium, all the different things that are in it. That's actually what creates your soil pH. And so if you take some water and you put a half gallon in there and it doesn't just pour out the bottom, like you're not leaching the soil, you're just watering it. The water isn't going to change the pH of the soil unless you strip out the calcium or add more magnesium or dump sodium in it. That's what dictates the pH of the soil. And a lot of growers, they start reading, they're like, wow, plants can't take up nutrients if the pH is off. That must be what's going on. Well, they also can't if you're overwatered. So sometimes it's something else that's, that's causing the issue, not really the water. But um, when you, let's say you took perfectly clean water and it was 7.0 pH, it was just RO'd, there's zero parts per million in there. And someone tells you 5.5 pH is better. So you pH down. I mean, literally you're putting a little bit of, you're just adjusting the hydrogen ever so slightly. There's no sodium in there. There's no calcium. There's nothing that's really going to change anything. The soil will probably change the water. But what's interesting is the soil pH is what dictates the uptake of nutrients. And the root in a living soil grow can change the pH in that two to three millimeters zone uh, right around the root tip significantly and on, on an exponential scale moving a point or two is like logarithmic it's like much greater than it sounds and the plant can do that so who are we fooling if we're trying to predict the perfect ph where the plant might be saying no i'm trying to force the soil to be in this range and you keep coming in and changing it so being a steward means trusting the soil but you can't trust some soil that's full of salt i'm saying a well-built soil the ph should totally handle itself and you you just should not have any concern of ph at all but here's the curveball. When you're farming out here on this alkaline soil and you water with ditch water that is run off from all the other farms by the time it gets to you and it's high in alkalinity, not just pH. And I know they sound the same, but you can do more research on water and I'm certainly not an expert. I just know enough to be dangerous. That alkalinity is actually the problem, not the pH. It's that it's bicarbonate that's in there and chlorides that's in there and maybe some magnesium sodium that's just jacking the pH. And so you go water with it and it's not like the high pH water is the problem. It's the fact that we are already fairly alkaline and the biology and your cover crop finally released some calcium from the calcium carbonate and the plant root is about to access readily available calcium and the water that comes in is full of carbonate, bam, binds up in a calcium carbonate. The plant can't get it anymore. So when the biology is trying to do all this work, and our water stops it and binds and makes other chemicals and is constantly causing issues, pH is a concern. And what's interesting is that acidifying an alkaline soil actually eliminates those carbonates that are the problem, not really the pH. And so now the calcium stays available. And so I find it fascinating that there's so much to learn about water. And I will say, none of it matters when you're on regular water. It's when you have well water, ditch water, things that may have stuff in it that really messes with your soil and can build up over time. It'd be very worthwhile to go to Logan Labs out of Ohio, go to loganlabs.com, and go to their water analysis, 
print out a report, call them, whatever you got to do, and then you put the water in a bottle, you mail it to them, and they give you an analysis. And they'll tell you, here's everything. And even if you don't know about a water test, you can just take the recommended numbers and compare and see where you're high or low, and then make some guesses, and then maybe do some research. But um, what's interesting about the, the person that you're saying asked the question is they're on tap water. It's, it's fairly rare to see such high pH out of the tap because most municipalities have rules for what will ruin the pipes and what's good for humans. And so I wonder if that tap is connected to a well, and that's why it's, it's really well water, but it's his tap water, in which case you'd have to do a water test. Because if that's just some minerals that are you know non-problematic, it could be that he just waters with it. It's fine. Um, it used to be that the living soil growers would use Ag Sil 16H, like every watering, even though it's not organic, but it's made from sand, so none of us really cared. Um, but that's like 11 pH, and when you check your water after adding it, it's like nine and people would water every time and they'd be like, this pH doesn't matter. Um, and I think partially the, the mulch layer and a volume of soil, it could definitely fix a lot of those issues. But in a smaller container with nine pH, if it's full of a problem, it'll, it'll be realized fairly quickly. A big bed of soil might buffer it. So it's a non-issue. Um, you can reverse osmosis that. And a lot of people say, don't use RO. I agree because it's wasteful. It takes part of the water and discards it and it's slow and it's you know fairly expensive, but it does fix the water. And in living soil, you don't like it'll work just fine. RO is not gonna hurt anything. It's just more like maybe not the best way to do it. Um, so that's an answer. Without a soil test, you could just RO it. And you know, if it's sodium in there, you're not gonna filter it. You'll have to RO it. And then the sodium's gone and your plants are gonna grow like crazy. Um, in the meantime, if you're really worried, you can just go buy some water and use that until you get your water tested. It's kind of a pain to lug water around, but at least you know. And if this was just tap water and it was 8 pH or something, I would just use it and, and see. Um, you could always buy water, use it on some plants and use your tap water on one and kind of decide going forward. Um, but I, I guess the gist of this is it depends, right? Um, there's no one right answer for you. And so um, I will say pH should not matter. But when you have water that you know is problematic, it returns to the equation, and it's important to have good water. So. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.